Hi everyone. The following derivation is a biconditional and it's a theorem, which means there is no premises and the truth of the theorem should follow uh, straightforward. Always write the show line to start. Now in a theorem we have no available lines to start with immediately. So typically what we would do is we would do a breakdown where this is going to be um, you know, an assume CD or something like that, but this isn't a conditional, this is actually a biconditional. So remember, the biconditional structure is very straightforward. If I want to show the biconditional, what I really need to do is show one way, and then I need to show the other. And when I have both ways, I can combine them into one using conditional to biconditional. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. This is going to be sort of a longer proof because I actually have to do it both ways, but we'll just see how it goes. So, I show not bracket p arrow q, but instead of the biconditional, it's the conditional p and not q. Now I'm ready to assume cd not p arrow q, and on 4 I need to show p and not q. Now, I'm not quite sure what to do here, so if I'm in doubt, I can actually just put in the assume ID. The likelihood of me using this is pretty low, but it doesn't really matter. It's just handy to have just in case. At this point, I'm stuck, and like all the times when I'm stuck in basic rules, I just have to look and figure out what the structure of the proof is telling me to do. If I need to show P and not Q, I need to show both sides of the disjunction. I need P, and I also need not Q. So that's not a big deal, I just do one at a time. First I will show P. So on line 7, I get not P by my AID, and now I look around. What can I do with this not P? Well, it's actually sort of unclear. The trick here is that my only available line is this, and it's the negation of a conditional. Well, if I have the negation of a conditional, I can't do anything to it, so I actually better use a show line to generate a contradiction, because what would be really nice to have is p arrow q. So I'm going to write show p arrow q. And on line 9, I assume cd, which is p. Now, I know I could write q, show q, and then assume id that, but actually, I'm done. If I have the p here, and I have a not p here, I just need to repeat the not p, 7 repeat, and then I'm, I have a contradiction with line 9. A contradiction will show anything. Now this might seem a bit mysterious because I open with a conditional derivation and close with an indirect, but it doesn't matter. Mixed derivations are totally allowed in our derivation system, and once I have a con contradiction anywhere, I am able to use that contradiction to show whatever I want, and in this case it's my previous show. Well, I've now showed p arrow q. Why did I show p arrow q? Because it's going to contradict with line 3, so I just repeat line 3, and I get the contradiction I need. 3 repeat, and on line 8, that's a contradiction, and so I have successfully shown p. So that is the first step of my derivation. Now I need to show not q. Now showing not q hmm, might be a little tricky. I'll take a look. On line 13, I get q as my assume uh, cd. Well, theorems are very repetitive, so we just have to remember that when we're doing it. On line 14, then, I'm actually going to do the exact same move as I did over here. I realize that still, my only real available line is line 3, which is to sh the negation of a conditional. So what would be really nice is if I could show p arrow q. So on 15, I do p, which is an assume cd, and on 16, well, I could write show q, but I don't really need to. I know I have it here already, so I'm going to say q, that's 13, repeated, and I will say, hey look, that's my consequent, so it's a conditional derivation, I can close it. And I do the exact same thing I did before. On line 17, I repeat not p conditional q, from line 3, repeat, and that contradicts with line 14, so I get to say id. Box and close. And now I've shown not q. Once I have my parts, I'm ready to put them together. And I get p and not q 
from line 6 and line 12 a join because that is the only way I can build an AND statement. Uh, that is a direct derivation and that takes care of this no problem. To finish I just have to unjettison my assumption. I showed p and not q under the assumption of not p arrow q so of course that means that I can close this out and say on line 4 I got the consequent of a conditional derivation there. Now unfortunately this is actually only one half of the theorem. I have to actually show the other way. Showing the other way is showing p and not q arrow not bracket p arrow q. Fortunately, this way is much easier. This is a conditional, so I assume the antecedent, assume CD, and I will show the consequent, not P arrow Q. Don't be fooled, this is not a conditional, so I cannot do a conditional derivation. The only thing I can do is assume ID, and I get P arrow Q, and that is AID. Now from here, this is actually really easy. What I should realize is that on line 21, it's a conjunction. So the only thing I can do to it is simplify. So I can simplify it and get the P, and I can simplify it and get the not Q. But if I get the P, I realize I get immediately modus ponens. A conditional can only be MP'd or MT'd, and if I have the antecedent, I'm good to go. So if I actually do that and run the modus ponens, I get Q. How did I do it? 21, simplify. 23, modus Components. Now on line 25, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to simplify the other half of 21 to get not Q. And this is 21 simplified. But of course, this is the perfect contradiction of line 24. So that's an ID box and close. I've just shown not P arrow Q under the assumption of P and not Q, which means I've actually shown the conditional statement and I can point to the consequent, line 22, and say that is a conditional derivation. Now I'm only one line away from finishing the proof, and that's line 27. Now that I have this show here, this is one way, and I've also shown the other way, I can combine them into the final version, which is not bracket p arrow q by conditional p and not q and that's line 2 line 20 conditional to by conditional direct derivation because it's exactly what I wanted so the demonstration of theorems is always long but there's nothing to it there's no premises here to work with and you have to do both ways the first way I picked actually turned out to be far more difficult than the second. In the first way, I actually had to generate contradictions over and over again, and I also had to show P as well as showing not Q. But fortunately, once I figured out how to show P, showing not Q was the exact same. I used the negation of P arrow Q as a contradiction generator to essentially move forward. Showing the other way was no problem. It was just a simplification followed by modus ponens and then this way solved. If you're ever stuck on a theorem, you can actually just leave a bunch of lines and try and do the other way. In solving the other way, you might actually sort of realize something about the proof, and then it will give you insight on how to sort of fix the other side. Don't forget, though, structure really does matter. I had to know ahead of time that to show a biconditional, I had to show one way, then the other, then I was going to conditional biconditional them. And over here, when I had to show a conjunction, I had to know that I was going to show both sides. So lots of things to think about in this derivation. It's a nice example of a biconditional theorem. Good luck.